Six times it mentions the thousand year reign in only seven verses. So when I see something mentioned six times in just seven verses, then that means you need to pay attention to it. That's what God wants you to do. And do you think God meant that as literal or allegorical? It's just spiritual. Well, no, 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 no. Six times in seven verses means God says, pay attention. This is literal. My son is going to reign. Jesus, God the son, is going to reign from Jerusalem physically on earth for 1,000 years. This is what God's telling you. This is not some allegorical thing, my friend. And and I'm going to show you where that all started. We're going to look at that right now. So... So the thousand-year reign mentioned six times in seven verses. So the millennium means, biblically, it means the thousand-year reign of Christ. Millennium, milli, right? The thousand, that's what that means, okay? So premillennium means Jesus returns before the thousand-year reign, before his physical reign from Jerusalem, okay? This is what the Jewish people were expecting at that time, by the way. If you want to go back to the historical view of the grammatical historical way of studying the Bible, they all believed that he was going to reign from Jerusalem, and this was going to be that earthly reign, and, and peace would be on earth, and that's what they were waiting for. And Jesus tells them that, no, you know, it's going to be later. I'm, I, basically, I'm fulfilling Isaiah 53 first, right? So here we can see that the early church, the early church believed Jesus' premillennium return. Now, many scholars will tell you otherwise, oh, no, 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 the early church believed that God was, you know, he was finished with the nation of Israel and that the church has become spiritual Israel. Be careful with over-spiritualizing scriptures. That's what the Gnostics did. Now, some things are allegorical, some things are spiritual, but God makes sure he lets you know which things are and which aren't. But when he mentions something six times in seven verses, it's literal, my friend, okay? So, and plus, the context of it was they were waiting for a literal reign of Jesus from Jerusalem. So the early church believed Jesus' pre-millennium return, okay? So in the first three centuries, this was the main view of the church. In the third and fourth century later, right, the Alexandrian interpretive school, that school in North Africa in Egypt, believed they started allegorizing the scriptures, right? This is what happened. So allegorizing, what's that? That means they're over-spiritualizing the scriptures, making it say whatever they want. And it started with this guy right here, Origen of Alexandria, in 185 to 254 CE, or, you know, you could say AD, that's what I like to say. And it also was with this guy right here, Augustine, St. Augustine, right? And that was in 354 to 430 AD, way after the early, early church. However, my friend, however, for the first three centuries, the church believed what? Jesus is coming back to earth to set up his kingdom. That's what the early church believed. Papias believed it, and he was he was right there with John. Justin Martyr believed it. Arrhenius believed it. Tertullian believed it. Hippolytus, he believed it. So back to Papias. He was discipled by the apostle John. Now, I would believe him before I believed any of these other guys that were hundreds of years later. Papias said this. He said, there will be a millennium when the kingdom of Christ is return, is established on earth. So he's speaking of a physical return of Jesus. Justin Martyr said this, listen to this, Jerusalem will be rebuilt just as Ezekiel and Isaiah declared. The only ones who do not believe that are the Gnostic heretics. Whoa, I didn't say that. Justin Martyr said that, one of the early, early church fathers. And I believe he was discipled by a guy who was discipled by John himself. You want to go further back in history to get the truth, my friend. That's where the truth comes. So we got to believe that Jesus is going to rule and reign from Jerusalem physically after he returns. Okay, And I believe that there will be a seven-year great tribulation period where he catches up his bride, the church, to be with him uh, for seven years. And then after that, he comes back to save Israel and all the others who 
did not take the mark of the beast. So let's look at this. We're going to go right into what Israel looks like during the Messiah's reign, how big it's going to be. Watch this. Here it is. So Israel is going to be massive. Sorry, I left my picture in there. But right now, Israel is about this big, and it's going to be this huge area. Watch this. There's more pictures of it. So it's going to, right now, this is how you see it. So Israel returns from the four corners of the world. That's in Ezekiel 36 and 37. They came from all of these nations, and they came back during the 1800s and in the early 1900s. And then in 1948, what? They became a nation again. They were reborn, rebirthed, which is what we see in Ezekiel 36 and 37. He said, "These can these dry bones live? And God tells Ezekiel, I'm going to cause these dry bones, these dead bones, to come back to life. And that's what he did when the nation of Israel was miraculously reborn. So this is the size of it today. It's only this little tiny footprint about the size of New Jersey. But what's it going to look like during the the reign of Christ? We're going to get to that in a minute, but watch this. This was during Solomon's reign, and this was the largest... The, the Israel in its greatest glory. This is when it was the, the largest footprint in the Middle East. Because God promised all of this land to Abraham, and that had not been fulfilled yet. But watch this. You're going to see it right here. This is the footprint for when the Messiah reigns. It goes from the river of Egypt, which most scholars believe was the Nile, perhaps one right over here, but that doesn't matter. And then it goes all the way, a straight line across all the way to the Euphrates River which is right here, and it goes all the way up into this area, parts of Turkey and Syria and Lebanon, and, it, and it, all of this land, even this land that, that Egypt owns right now, Gaza, all of this, this. All of this area is going to be the Jewish Messiah's reign, Jesus, during that millennial reign, the reign of Christ, all the land that God promised to Israel right here. That's what it's going to be. <laughs> so before that happens, we saw 36 and 37 was was Israel coming back as a nation, right, to the land of Israel. But then 38, 39, this is a war that has to take place first, okay? And this is called the, the Magog War. You may have heard about it, where we see Gog, the leader, leading Magog, and Persia, which is Iran, and all these other countries, the the Turkey and some of these other places, and and Libya, and perhaps uh, uh, Kush, which could be Sudan and Libya. All these forces come down against Israel. That's what we're seeing. But God wipes them out. God completely wipes them out. He says the world will know it was me. He says God when he destroys this army that comes down. This Ezekiel thirty eight thirty nine army. It comes against Israel. God's going to wipe them out, and the whole world's going to know it. And then what happens after that? Well, then it's all about the millennial reign, the reign of the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, from Jerusalem. So you'll see that right here. Watch this. So so anyway, actually, you won't. You'll have to look at this video. I'll post it right here. But if you look at this video on how Jesus celebrated Hanukkah, you can also see this other one in Ezekiel chapters 36 through 48, and it'll walk you through this millennial reign and how Ezekiel shows us this, and you're going to be blessed by it. So click on this right here, and you'll see it all, my friend.